Hello and welcome to Let's Do Lunch. I am Justine Conley with AARP Florida. And I'm Linda Levin with Elder Source, the Area Agency on Aging and Aging and Disability Resource Center for Northeast Florida. And I am Hope McMath with Yellow House, which is an arts and social justice organization in Jacksonville, Florida. And we're really excited to be able to do something um, creative and joyful and meaningful with all of you today. Um, we are going to have a guided process of bringing some art making and some writing together in a way to provide uh, personal expression and a bit of healing. It's actually something I do in my own practice every day, right? I've got my own journal with me as inspiration. So whether you consider yourself an artist, a writer or not, today is still very much for you. This is, this is going to be a 30 minute gift for all of you. So um, we're watching Let's Do Lunch, a monthly viral ARP Jacksonville and Elder Source free virtual event. And today you get to be the star. So let's not uh, prolong this. Let's take it away, Miss Hope. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We are, I'm thrilled to be um, sharing this space with all of you. And um, I want to encourage everyone who is part of this to do a couple of things for me, right? One, make sure you know where your um, comment section is on uh, your computer, because we're going to make this very interactive and we want to be able to hear from you as we go through this today. Also, because we are actually gonna do some hands-on creativity together, you need to grab up, and what it can be whatever is near you, you need to grab up some paper, it can be scrap paper, it can be computer paper, it can be an envelope, and something to write with or draw with. It can be a ballpoint pen, it can be a marker, it can be highlighters if you're sitting at a desk, right? Um, if you are really creative and you have crayons or colored pencils or watercolors, you can grab those too. Um, so just don't, you don't have to go too far. Oh, look, Justine's got her markers. You don't have to go too far. Just whatever's sort of nearby, uh, grab it up. And even if you feel like you can't follow along today live with art materials, we want you to still follow along today with us live as observers and participants in this process. We are gonna have a way for all of you to be part of what we're doing creatively today. And part of the point of doing this is, you know, it goes without saying, th these are tough times right now. And so finding ways that we can process the world around us and also tap into joy, remind ourselves of the things that are good, right? to feed the artist in us, whether you consider yourself an artist or not. Um, for me, it's really about flexing those creativity muscles. Um, I love a quote by Maya Angelou. She says, uh, you can't use up creativity. The more you use, mm -hmm. the more you have. I like that. So today, we are gonna make sure you have plenty of creativity to get you through whatever you need to be getting through, all right? Um, so today specifically, we are going to focus on the marriage of art and words and the way that plays out in a big scale, but also a more intimate scale through letters and journals. And that's really what we're going to focus on today. But I want to show you an image of what I mean when I say big scale. There's something about when art and words combine up that it helps us express who we are what we care about, the things we need to say, what our experiences have been, right? And so here we see it playing out large scale on a wall, you know, a piece of public art. And of course, this next image, many of you will know Robert Indiana's famous sculpture, Love. This is where words become art, right? But we're not going to do something that large. One, we only have 30 minutes together. And two, we'd probably need to be in the same physical space together. So we're going to do something more intimate, like the images that I'm going to show you here. All three of these are either a page from a book, a page from a journal, or a letter created by some of our most famous artists. The first one is by Picasso, the middle one, Frida Kahlo, and the third one, William Blake. These are raw images of art and words coming together. 
This is less about being precious and perfect. And it's really about creativity in its most honest sense. So if you go to the next image, I will show you that what we are not trying to do today is to create a masterpiece, right? This is Van Gogh's famous painting of a sower in the field. Oh, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? It's just so beautiful, that yellow and blue. This is not what we're trying to do, right? What we're gonna do is something more like what Van Gogh did when he was sending letters to his brother, Theo. These are beautiful and honest responses from a man who has something to say to his brother about the world around him, about the way he's feeling, about the things he's thinking about, his nightmares and his dreams. And the art that he put in here with these words isn't a masterpiece, it's a sketch, it's a thought, right? But because it comes from him authentically as a gift to his brother, um, it's some, it's just as powerful as that gorgeous finished painting that we saw, right? So this is our point of inspiration. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So we are going to start um, with the writing part of this. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're like me, but I get intimidated by the blank page. Now I happen to journal every day. I think it's an important part of my practice as an artist, as a human being, as a communicator, as somebody who's just trying to hold it together on some days. Journaling helps me do that. But a blank page can still be intimidating. So I'm a big believer in creating prompts that are simple, a simple question or a word for people to respond to, all right? Today, I've gone ahead and pre-selected our word for today. And our word for today is gratitude. So here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. I'm gonna ask you to take that piece of paper, if you have a piece of paper and something to write with, okay? It can be a marker, it can be a pen, a ballpoint pen, right? It can be skinny, it can be fat. I want you to get that close by. If you don't have a piece of paper, y'all, that's okay, because you're gonna give us some responses in the chat box. Here's what I want you to think about. How sitting here, right here today at this moment together, if you were gonna answer the question, I am grateful for, that's what I want you to think about. So for those of you that are writing, what I would encourage you to do is somewhere on your piece of paper, nice and big, I want you to write the word gratitude, or you could write, I'm grateful for, right? And then underneath that, without overthinking it. I just want you to write down a list of words or phrases about what you are grateful for today. Those of you who are not writing along at home, you can be our keyboard warriors, right? You can be typing things into the chat box about what you are grateful for today. And keep in mind, gratitude can come in small packages, right? So last night I was cooking a meal and I was able to walk right outside and pull a lime off a lime tree wow. that sits right outside my kitchen door. Like I'm grateful for that lime tree, right? There's just something really special about being able to go and grab my own food from my own yard. But gratitude can also be something much larger and more profound. It can be gratitude for good health, right? It can be gratitude for the wisdom of our elders. So I just want you to start putting down your thoughts about what you're grateful for, right? Put it on that piece of paper. Don't get fancy with it, but like write those words and phrases down with gusto, like you really mean it, okay? And we already have some things popping up in the comments. Somebody says, I'm grateful for peace of mind. Wow, right? That's, yeah for any moment that you have peace of mind. That's something to be grateful for. Somebody says they're simply grateful for life in spite of the pandemic. We have somebody who has said, I'm grateful for health, right? So keep them coming, keep them coming. What are you grateful for today? Write yeah. them down, put them in the chat box, right? Think of those small moments of gratitude as well as the big ones. It could be about a place, right? It could be about a person. It could be about sustenance. Oh, somebody's written the smell of the marsh near my house. Beautiful. I love that. 
And you know, Hope, you know, Hope yes. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful I'm to have a colleague like, like you who could join us today to help to folks at home who, who are really struggling with the circumstances we're living in. Um, yes. It's very challenging, it's very str stressful for seniors who are at home right now, and particularly if they're caregivers. And what you showed us is how words, simple words of gratitude can become art, can be artful, and how that can help us heal and uh, manage through this time. So this is a great time for people to think of what, what they are grateful for, what is, is inspiring to them, those words that they will turn into art that they could turn to time and again to help them get through these times. Um, so I'm, I'm thankful for you and for this day and for this moment we're having with everybody. Um, and I hope everyone is taking this opportunity. It doesn't have to be fancy. You saw that handwriting on that page. It wasn't fancy, but it was still artful. Jill says she's grateful for friends. There's something about honoring our thoughts, right? We sort of honor them by putting them to paper, right? Okay. Yeah, Justine. Um, I'm grateful for just another day. So uh, for, for I got to walk this morning. So I'm grateful for Memorial Park. <laughs> and you could draw something beautiful about that with, with your words. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody Jill? says I'm grateful for my empty nester time, right? <laughs> for, for the empty nesters in the house. You're I probably feel that. Maybe feeling that one too, right? I right. Feel that. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, I love, 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 love these thoughts, right? And so the prompt is simple, right? And the prompt could be other things. Oh, somebody just says I'm grateful for health and strength. Right. Wow. There's something really profound about that because health is one thing. Right. But health and strength mm -hmm. um, is something more. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Helpful to share this moment with you ladies. Well, we're helpful to sh we're um, really uh, grateful to share it with you. Right. People walking to the sound. Um, so we've got we've got lots of people grateful for outdoor spaces, grateful for the people in their lives. Right grateful simply to be alive. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love um, this I love one from this Patty. Part. Grateful for family, friends, guacamole, sunshine, rain, laughter, good health, and dogs. Wow. Like, that was all poetic. All of that. All of that. So. Um, I like that. I love yeah. this so much. It's There's so a poem cool. in there. Oh, there is. And the poem is being worked on as we speak. That's so right. That's right. I love it. I love wow. it. Okay. Someone's grateful for taking care of their great grandkids. Mm. That's fantastic. And I saw someone else was just grateful for true friends. This is a time when we really need each other. We need our family, like our great grandkids and our mm -hmm. grandkids. And we need our friends right now. And so that's right. That's that right. That is definitely something to be thankful for. So write down your last thought. Okay. Write down your last thought. And then we're going to take these words and begin to make. Um, a visual work of art out of them, right? So for those of you who have been writing along at home, you probably have, you know, some pieces of paper that's got like lots of words written on it, I hope. I'm sitting here looking at this comment um, screen and that itself is a work of art. It's really, really beautiful, the things that people have said. And I happen to believe that words alone are enough. But when we're talking about journaling and we're talking about giving yourself space and time to live with those words, art making gives us permission to sit with it for a while, right? Mm -hmm. Art sort of requires us to engage in it. It clears space for us to really think about nothing else and just consider what's right in front of us. And maybe it's been a long time since some of you have doodled or drawn or watercolored. I have no idea. You'll have to let me know. When was the last time that you found yourself um, working with uh, colored pencils or picking up the paintbrush, right? So what we're going to do now is on that piece of paper, for those of you who have been writing your ugly little lists at home, right? Now is the time that we add color to it that we honor those words by making them into art. So you are simply going to cover 
whatever that piece of paper is, it might be an envelope, a napkin, a computer piece of paper. I want you, if you've got color, right? If you've got highlighters or markers, now's the time to just add energy to that. Fill it in. Get rid of all the white on that piece of paper. Color right over the words, color around the words. This is less about making a picture and it's about the freedom of art making when there's no expectation, right? So you don't have to create an actual picture. If these words of gratitude around sunrises and sunsets has you inspired, you don't have to draw the sun. You can just cover that piece of paper with yellow, orange, pink, and red. If you don't have color in front of you and all you have is a ballpoint pen or a Sharpie, just make marks. Doodle all around the edges of that paper, right? Create a frame for those words because what you're saying is this is important and it is worthy of my time. Now this may seem to some of you as, as childish, right? This woman's sitting here telling me to get out crayons and markers and like color. It isn't childish, but it is childlike. And what I mean by that is it reminds us of the importance and power of play, of things that are unstructured, right? of free expression that doesn't have edges put to it. And it is incredibly liberating to simply play with some materials. I actually happen to believe that one of the most valuable tools anybody can have in their tool chest is one of these. <laughs> it's 99 cents, y'all. And when you all of a sudden are flowing watercolor paints across paper, and not worrying about what it looks like at the end. You have just escaped, even if just for a few minutes, everything that is hard, right? And there is healing in that time. Can I tell you and a story? It's also fun. Yeah, Justine. Um, one of my friends had a real serious eye infection that she had to go through infusions every like every few weeks and it was very, very serious and they couldn't find all of the, you know, knew what, it was, a, she was very, very ill and we, for months and years, but she had to have infusions and she would take a coloring book, an adult coloring book mm -hmm. and she would take the markers. And while she was doing that hour or two hour infusion, it might've been longer than that, she just colored. And she said that what it did was it took her mind off of everything that was happening to her Yes. And she was grateful that she had medication that it was going to help heal her eyes. And she's a, she's better now. But boy, she talked about how healing, you talked about healing earlier, it was and helpful to just color with no other agenda except for to color. And, yeah. take right. and we, we very rarely give ourselves permission to do things that don't have some sort of larger agenda attached to them. But what I would like everyone in this room with us today to consider this virtual room is that we must do this for ourselves to be present in our own bodies, to give our minds a break, to recognize that fun still needs to be had no matter what is going on. It is what gives us that strength that somebody talked about earlier, right? So for me, this kind of work isn't really even optional. I consider it part of how I need to move through the world to take care of myself and to take care of the people around me, right? So I hope you've been making some marks, right? And you've been um, just sort of letting yourself go and doodle and draw and color. Um, and so I'm going to show you, um, well, first of all, I want to ask you, for those of you that have been doodling or drawing, I want you to put in the chat box, how did it feel to do that? How did it feel to not have a teacher telling you that you had to make a certain kind of picture? How did it feel to simply play, right, with image making and making marks. You know, what was your response to that? I mean, Justine gave us this incredibly powerful example of 
her friend who felt like she could escape from the treatment that she was going through. Oh, somebody just said peaceful, right? A slice of peace in the middle of the day brought to you by paper and pencil, right? Relaxing, peaceful, creative, beautiful, beautiful. That's exactly what we were hoping. And some of you may not do this very often and some of you may do it a lot, right? But the power of this process is whether you consider yourself an artist or a writer doesn't really matter, right? So I wanna share with you something that I was doing as I was sort of looking up and down from you. I wanted to do something sort of uh, raw and in the moment to show that it also doesn't take very much time to do it. So it, it's not a masterpiece, y'all. But here's, here's my gratitude wow. for you. And it's using your words. So I'm gonna give you the gift of reading back to you what you all shared, right? And I know you all have your own sort of gratitude pages right now, but I'm gonna give you um, a response to this moment that we're all sharing together. So here we go. Gratitude is family, love, good health. I am grateful for peace of mind, the smell of the marsh near my house, and life in spite of the pandemic. Gratitude is faith. It is the love of being an empty nester. Gratitude is guacamole, sunshine, rain, and laughter. Gratitude is taking care of my grandkids. Gratitude is great friends. Gratitude is both the sunset and the sunrise. That's y'all's poem. Wow, wow right? Whoa. Right. <laughs> seemingly so simple, seemingly so simple, right? But this collection of words, and then when we honor it in this way, right? Without perfection, without pressure, without self-judgment, it is, somebody said, freedom in their response, freedom to express individualism. That's exactly what we were just doing. Now, I will also say this, though. This is something that you can keep, right? Nobody ever has to see it. But it's also something you can share. I could choose to give my gratitude page. This is one I made earlier with Sharpie, with um, highlighters, right, on my desk. I could, I could give this to someone who I was feeling grateful for because at a time where it's harder for us to be physically with one another, this is my physical being. I touched this paper. I made these marks. I wrote these words. So for me to send this along to someone means they get to touch me, right? We are it's all of a sudden connected, right? Hope it's a beautiful gift. I mean, there's nothing more beautiful and more personal than something that you created that is a piece of yourself that you could give to somebody. And you know what I find is that when you do that, not only is it a gift you give to them and you make them feel good, yes. it's a gift to yourself. I feel good. Right. When I give something like that, it's... um. What, three, first of all, your art was beautiful, you know, what you just showed us. But, and you can see it doesn't take much, but what a great outlet, what a great gift to them and to yourself. Um, I agree. There's something about, well, we know this. Um, the more digital, the more virtual the world has become, the more we tend to hunger for the authentic, for the real, for the tangible, right? It's why people still want to hear live music. We can actually access music anywhere at any time, but we still hunger for it. It's why people still go to museums. It's why we put art on the walls behind us, right? The virtual is fine. It gives us greater access, but it doesn't replace the authentic exchange of tangible objects made by human hands with love and today with gratitude, right? 
So that's what I'm grateful for is the opportunity and reminder that we can make creativity something part of our everyday experience. And even if we do nothing else with it but that, it has value. But if we also find ways to share it, right, there is exponential joy that can come from that particular experience. So I hope y'all had fun with that. I know it was just a, it's just a taste, it's just a bite, but it shows you magical things can happen in 30 minutes. Beautiful. 30 seconds. One, I just had an idea of, I wanna do a Zoom party where we all bring materials and do a guided something with the words. Ooh, ooh. I love ideas of just, yeah. I love coming together and I need the interaction. So that is well, yeah, right. This space, this coming together and people sharing is super powerful. We all can be doing our own thing, but sharing it out and hearing how other people are doing and how this process is helping them. Um, it's beautiful how connected we all feel all of a sudden, right? Yeah, yeah. I can see, I can see how some seniors who are using Zoom or other platforms. I know my mom, 85, uses Zoom all the time these days uh, to connect with friends and family and people she volunteers with. They could do an art night together. So love we this. Can use the virtual world to love be this. creative together in our spaces and and support each other in this way during this time. Um, what a Great opportunity. Love it. So for those of you that are with us, do you have any ideas of how this process, this very simple process we went through today, how you could see it being used and applied, right? Virtually or in person? Like, can you think of any other ways that you could integrate this into your life? If so, share them because it'll it'll bubble up other people's um thoughts and ideas. So if you have any other ways in comments, simple activity could, could make a difference for you or other people in your life, um, share them out and we'll, we'll make sure those get um, shared even further. Oh, someone said they're going to use this to make Christmas cards, their own Christmas mm -hmm. cards. Great right. idea. What a beautiful idea. I mean, we know how easy it is to go get that box of Christmas cards and we know we all get lots of them, though not as many as we used to. And now we get digital Christmas cards. Um, but imagine getting even something this raw and all of a sudden opening that up in the mail. Oh, somebody said, thank you notes. Thank you notes. Oh, yeah. that's really beautiful because <laughs> right. It makes you, it makes people realize like, wow, if they spent this time making this, they really do mean it. Right? They really mean it. Yeah. It takes, it takes a thank you note to a whole nother level. <laughs> it does. It does. And listen, I've got I've got a desk full of these kinds of things that, you know, they get left for me and I'm, I've got them tacked all over my walls in my office. It's like once you empower people to do this and go down this path uh, and they make it a part of how they communicate their thoughts about other people, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Love it. Love it. We'd like to invite you. Thank you so much for being here and hope. Oh my gosh, I could be here two more days. Um, but we Me thank too. you for being here and we encourage you to post uh, your pictures, a uh, uh, picture of your picture on uh, 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 Elder Source Facebook page and the AARP Facebook page. So um, uh, we are grateful for you being here and we look forward to seeing. Uh, she said wellness check notes. I love it, Pam. Ooh, um, beautiful. Right? Uh, so thank you, Linda. Any yes. words? Yes, before we go, Hope, you've been so wonderful to spend your time with us today. We know you, you're with Yellow House. Yellow House is your creation. And I really encourage people to go online and check out Yellow House mm -hmm. and what they have to offer. Um, Beautiful work is being done there. Social justice work is being done there. Social change and just art, beautiful yes. art. So, yes. Hope, thank you. Thank you You're and Yellow House. And um, thank you everyone for joining us. And we look forward to seeing everybody next month for Let's next Do Lunch. For Let's Do Lunch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay creative, y'all. Yes, thank you.